Hello everybody and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're jumping in here today doing some flight training. I think it's a good way to start off really the series. Uh, I've done a few flights but I think it's time that we dive in and show you some of the flight training options that are available within the simulator. So we're going to jump over to flight training. In here we've got two options. You've got general aviation training and you've got airliner training. We're going to start with the general aviation training giving you a bit of an idea of what it's like to fly in the Cessna and then obviously you've got uh, all your basic controls and stuff and we're going to do episodes on each one cover it all uh, basic controls and cameras is basically covering you know basically getting all your joysticks and then stuff configured mine's all set up and good to go so i don't need to adjust anything there but we're going to dive straight into altitudes and instruments get that going we're going from sedona uh, it's a high altitude airport um and basically it's a good way to give you a bit of an understanding what it's like to use your pitch your controls um uh, okay, angular runs elevators and stuff and give you a good understanding of what it's like. So we're going to hit fly, we're going to dive straight into it, and we're going to get it started. Today we're talking about attitudes of flight, how your plane is oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads nice on your instruments. Like that. I can hit control eight. That's gonna take, give us that nice shot at the front. So we're gonna look down out our instruments. So you basically hit control one take and that's gonna give you a shot as, of the instruments there, which is that's your attitude indicator. As the name implies it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon, with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. That's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. So from here we can go to Looks number like seven. Uh, no, five. Revolutions per minute. Three. Number three. Combined. Attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft. So all I'm doing is I'm pressing control and then your number, pa your, your keys at the top of your, your letters. Indicator. We go to two, uh, one, I think, one. There we go. That's your airspeed. Now, last but not least, check your sitting at about 90, 90 knots. To figure out your altitude, and that is your altitude. You always want to small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. That's correct. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. Hundreds of feet. See, a thousand feet, so we're sitting at about a thousand. Sitting yeah, smack, yeah, smack on about a thousand feet. Attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet, there we go, 6,000 feet. But that's yes, obviously, change. yeah, 6,000 the feet. When you're ready. There's your little area there, so 6,000 feet. So we're gonna go and take Pull control. Back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. I'm using the thru uh, Thrustmaster. Um, Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle the will thrust be too steep uh, to create lift. Joystick. And without enough lift, for the Airbus we'll edition. Stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. Full throttle. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer. You see how we're climbing According now. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up Use on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Throttle down to 2300 RPM. About there. Just Ease below the horizon. The yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Get it back down to 2300 RPMs. Just like that. Ease up 
up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. A little bit more power. Uh, okay, we're gonna reduce down then to 8800. Drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. You see, we're now descending. As expected, with the nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. We just need to get back up because we're going beyond the. Why don't you get us back area? to a cruise attitude and we'll hit the last part of our lesson? Uh, plus some power. We're gonna make a turn. So what turns what you want to do is you want to apply power. And you turn. And then we're gonna go ahead and reduce the there RPM. We go. There now we that we know how to cruise, climb, and descend, let's talk about the turn attitude. We did a little bit of that anyway. Left or right to start rolling the plane. Left or right. You can see we're starting to roll. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed. But you can also check your instruments for the details. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. Let me go up to a high the attitude. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. the practice you're turning you basically want to apply a bit more power go ahead and make that turn by pulling back on the yoke I'll go back down to 2300 rpm we're going to go ahead go control alt x thanks I've got control now well done And that's pretty much it. We go click next. We're gonna go on to the next one. It's a uh, takeoff and level flight. So we're gonna go ahead and practice the next activity. There's an old saying I like: a mile of road will take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard. But there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which there won't go. be an issue on a wind. calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. You can hit the page down, and that will actually give you a focus Everything on the runway. Good, no cross traffic, 
go ahead clear. and taxi into position. We're gonna go ahead and release the parking brake. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. Release the parking brake. We're gonna apply. Parking brake release. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of power. Steer onto the runway here. And I'll up with the center line. Make sure that we are lined up perfectly. Very touchy. We're going to line to the center of the runway here. Maybe if we went applying some brakes. I'm gonna go to full power. Disengage parking brakes. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Maintain the Good. center line. Now gently pull back on the yoke. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. And we're airborne. There we go, we're flying. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. 75 knots. A little bit more power. Come to fifteen thousand five hundred. A bit more power here. Ah, 5,500 feet. A nice, safe altitude for part two of our lesson. There we go, and we've taken off. Straight and level flight. First step here is adjusting our attitude. We're in a cruise attitude, pushing max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1,800 RPMs. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Nope. Probably Definitely better not. to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try nose adding trim. trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim. The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke, then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep to your desired speed. attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. We'll go down on the trim a little bit. Practice our turns.
Alright, and that's pretty much level. We can go ahead and reduce some speed. Add a bit of trim. Just the speed back down a little bit more. Go ahead and uh, add a bit more trim. And just like that. So we're going to go ahead and delegate controls back over. Okay, I have control. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. And that's pretty much how you do it. You just make some minor inputs and uh, you can then adjust your trim. So we've checked out the runway traffic. Reposition to for takeoff. Turn off parking brakes. Line aircraft to the center of the runway. We've used the parking brakes to reduce our throttle to zero. Uh, done the takeoff and we adjusted our flight straight out. Then to level flight and delegated controls instructor. We can go ahead and uh, go on to landing. Go ahead and do that. Instructor used to say the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't <laughs> wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. All right, we're coming in. And I've already set us up in landing configuration at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots. Change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number's moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. Gotta add a bit more power here. Otherwise, we'll stall out. Keep your aim point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, right. shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Looking pretty good, pretty lined up pretty well. A bit of rudder here just to get us straight on that center line. Pretty high still so we're gonna come in a little bit more. Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. All right, bring us to a stop. And it's just like that. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? Very good. So we've landed 
we go on to the next phase and it's going to be a traffic pattern we'll go ahead and go on to that one and let's get ready let's be honest no one likes going around in circles unless you're a pilot training on traffic patterns that's right Sedona's standard traffic pattern follows a 1,000 foot altitude around the main runway by the time we're through here you'll list. know how to complete the full run from takeoff to landing so let's get started all right full power got the 50 knots and then we go and take off Put a nice wheel down a little bit. Fifty knots, V one rotate. Maintain seventy five knots. When we're up, keep us aligned with the runway and climb to fifty four hundred feet. We're going for a left hand traffic pattern. You can see there's the entrance over there. You got all the information there for us. Uh, 5400 feet once we reach altitude you're gonna start turning left 90 degrees toward a 122 degree heading okay we're in the pattern get ready to enter the crosswind section good keep going till you reach the traffic pattern altitude of 5700 feet ready to make your left turn downwind when the runway appears at the halfway point of your wing strut you'll know you're at a good glide distance Alright, we're gonna go to the downward leg. We're about uh, point two eight nautical miles out. We've got the wind at our back now. We're All on right. the right track. Lower your nose to a cruise attitude and reduce power to twenty one hundred RPMs. Once your speed is in the white arc, add ten degrees of flaps to prep us for landing. Ten degrees of flaps. Now's not a bad time to check if the runway is looking good. Probably goes runway. without saying, always watch out for other planes entering or exiting the pattern. Definitely. We're looking pretty good. We're going to fly past the end of the runway here. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. That's your cue to turn left again onto the base leg. Uh, we're nearing our base turn. I'm going to maintain. Beautiful day out there. Stunning. Looking pretty good. I'm going to continue on with the altitude. Uh, it's looking pretty good. We got uh, 5,700 pretty much. Add a bit of boom. Alright, reduce power to idle to start losing altitude and maintain cruise attitude. Down to Keep an eye on the runway as we get ready for our final turn. That'll also keep our speed around 65 knots. On the base now. Final turn. Looking out for traffic. Looking good. Watching out for this mountain here as well. A little bit low. Some power. 
so we can have a stool here. Go okay, yeah, take a notch of flaps. We okay, go ahead and straighten ourselves up. There we go. The runway's in full view. Make sure to keep the plane centered on approach. If you're too high, add flaps. Too low, add power to maintain the glide path. Well, looking pretty good. Add some flaps. Beautiful. We've uh, landed successfully. A bit touchy, but we got there, which is pretty good. We can come to a complete stop. Way to stick the landing. Now just apply the brakes to slow your roll. And make sure you don't stop on the runway, of course. If other planes are looking to land, we've got to move. Take one of the taxiways on the right. Alright, with the Okay, the runway we take Alpha 5. Oh, there's a fire truck. Hello, fire truck. Good job. As an old instructor said to me, not only did you not die, you're really learning to fly. <laughs> God damn it. Classic pun. Alright, that's gonna be done. We're gonna. Uh, we've landed successfully in runway 2 1. Take off reach at 15, uh, 15,400 feet. Uh, sorry, 5,400 feet. Maintain 67 knots. Turn left to join traffic pattern. Turn left to, for downward leg. Turn left for base leg. And turn left for final approach. We've done all that, so. Our first solo flight. Let's go ahead and do it. This is it. The first solo flight. So we're going to be taking off. Following our crosswind. Downwind. Base leg and then coming in on the final. Let's go ahead and do it. It's time, your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me, but something tells me you won't. All right, your let's goal go ahead is to and complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered list. in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. Power. See you on the other side. Forty knots. The airspeed's alive. 50 knots, V1, rotate. Maintain the heading. 67, uh, maintain 67,000, uh, 67 knots, sorry. A bit more power. That's a good position right there. Go ahead and add some trim. Bit more power here. I'm gonna reach uh, 1500. We're gonna go too high, or we can risk a stall. I said him pretty good. Make that left base. The drawing traffic pattern. Add a bit more power. Up. 
probably the left leg. Do some speed. Beautiful. Very nice. So far so good. Very nice turn there. We'll go ahead and pull down some boom. Reduce some speed as well. Do some more trim. That gains more trim here. Just keep our altitude. Sixty-seven knots is what we'll maintain. We're now on the downwind of uh, runway two left. Uh, two one left of runway two one. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting the left run runway two. One. It's absolutely beautiful. So we're doing pretty well at seven, uh, fifteen thousand seven hundred. At just about seventy knots, we can probably slow that down a bit more. A bit more power. And we're pretty much good to go for our descent now. I'm going to go ahead and go flaps one. Pass down a bit. I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit, a bit more, a little bit more power there. And we're beginning our base. Uh, make our final turn left now. On final. Looking at the traffic, we're clear. Flaps two. Oh, aircraft down. Looking pretty good. Continue to maintain. Looking really good. Get onto that center line. Get the flip. Hmm, you weren't really supposed to land there. It's well done, don't get me wrong. Just not what was expected. Mm. At this point, I think it's probably best if we start the lesson over. Let's go again. I guess we didn't follow the full traffic pattern by the sounds of it. We'll try that again. We'll go full power. It's time. I can break Your the leaves. first solo flight. I'll be Clearly watching I didn't from the ground the, uh, in radio pattern. contact if you need me. But something tells me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. See you on the other side. 50 knots. Right out. Okay, 75 knots.
reaching 1500 what we're trying to achieve the left to drain traffic pattern and I'm going to turn left for the downwind leg Turn left for the base leg. That's much better. Much better the second time around. <laughs> Reduce some power here. Last one. I'll stay clear of the runway. some trim Flaps too. Get rid of the G speed. I'm gonna bring our flap. We're gonna go down the elevation. Reduce that elevator trim. That's a little bit. Get ready for the base turn. So it's about f once the airport, once the runway is about 45 degrees. Oh dear, we're looking back towards the, the seat. And turn left for base leg. And we'll turn left for final approach. Reduce some power. a bit though. And we'll make a left turn for the final approach. Our powers are turning. Okay, we're gonna land on runway 2 1. Reduce power. I'm gonna line up on the runway. Line up for the signs. The, the numbers 2 1. We go flaps. Oh. Well, a little bit higher, but that's okay. Not the problem. Alright, looking pretty good. Go on the flip of the flare. Good. Bring back some bottle. We'll take uh, Alpha 5. Add some brake. We'll take the next one. Now for six off. Oh, we're running off the wrong way. <laughs> running off the taxi way. Oh god. We'll just go into the aviation ramp, I guess. Might as well. Great job. There's always room for improvement. That's life, right? But you That's did right. it all on your own. Correct, we You're did. on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. Thank you. And that is it. Successful. How good. 
Next one is navigation. Now we're going to leave it there though and do that in the next episode of uh, our training. And we'll go ahead and leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Microsoft Flight Sim. We'll go ahead and continue on with the remaining of the training in the next episode. Until then, we'll see you in the next episode.